Hello there, we're back. The USA is always remembered for its massive lend-lease programs, its love of island hopping, and the 101st Airborne, baby! But was the USA really all that great? Did American factory power really make more of a difference than British ingenuity, air force, and sheer grit? Or endless Soviet suffering and pain? So I wanted to test them out, as realistically as possible. So I return to Black Ice, the ultimate historical suffering simulator, and I'm going to see just how painfully convoluted the USA is. What's worse, I'm doing it completely historically. This means only using the completely historical division and equipment designs that the USA actually used, all based on way too much research. For more upsettingly difficult and over-researched videos that leave me huddled in a corner with severe eye strain, why not subscribe? And to get access to early videos and a sources document for every history video, you can support me on YouTube memberships or over on Patreon. Alright, the USA. This is going to be hell because it's in Black Ice, and if you haven't played Black Ice, it is insane. It has tons of different research slots for differing types of research that you need to specialize. It has way more research than you could ever possibly imagine. Hugely expanded political issues, including food, and just so many things to keep track of. We're going to be suffering from the Great Depression, as well as the Dust Bowl Crisis, and all other kinds of terrible things for many years to come. All of which we need to fix if we're going to become the Lend-Lease Capital of the World. Oh god, look at all the roadblocks to our economy, devs, why? Oh god, look at the construction speed malice. Basically, our first priority is just to get off all of these terrible malices as soon as possible, so that we can try to build at least something. Oh, every time I click to this menu, I get so terrified. Look at all the things I have to keep an eye on. I'm just going to be building civilian factories for many years. Though this isn't my first Black Eyes Rodeo, so I've decided to up the production bonuses for both the Axis and the Common Turn just to help keep them on even playing fields. I just don't want it to be too easy for me, you know? I'm sure this won't cause a problem. Right, alongside all of the obvious necessary economic techs, because I really do need to catch up, I'm going to be going strategic destruction for my air doctrines, because I want to be going B-27 bombers, baby. I want to bomb the crap out of Germany. We start with a small army of a variety of templates, including Reserve Army and National Guard. They're not particularly accurate to what I will need later, but we'll make them in 1940 once it's time to actually make our historical divisions. There's going to be so much artillery. We've got billions of refineries and energy to keep in mind. Every single time I always fail to keep up with my refineries and I find myself in massive resource deficit. Not this time. I will not be in resource deficit. I promise. We interestingly already start with all of our factories and dockyards assigned, so we're just going to leave this as it is. There's, there's nothing we can do about this for a long while. We're not building military factories for years. Oh man, there's so many focuses I have to do to reduce the effects of the Great Depression. This is going to take so long, and there's like an optimal path here, and I don't know what it is. Oh, I'm going to be reading so much. There's also tons of these little micro-events. A treaty with Panama? Do we respect the treaty and build the road? Gra graphics pending. <laughs> Oh god, the negative malices don't stop. The Pittsburgh flood and a heat wave? My rations! Okay, honestly, my people are about to starve to death. I have to change off of balanced export economy. I need to try to just sell less goods on the market. This is the only thing I can do. Oh, look at that. That is so much better. I'm now not having to import so much iron and crap. Oh, why didn't I do this earlier? I have also only just realized that America has not finished researching World War I doctrines. I can't do World War II doctrines until you complete all of the World War I doctrines. So I'm going to be so behind. Isolationism, why? All right, there's the war in China. I'm trying to wait for world tension to hit 10% so I can get war is coming and I can start to go down my focus tree and, you know, actually fix my economy. But we still got to wait. There's other things I can do in the meantime. Oh, damn, look how early I can do the M1 Garand. Very nice. Give me that semi-auto rifle. It's beautiful. Okay, I've been sitting here doing the economic focuses for years. I can end the Great Depression. This will gradually reduce all the leftover effects as well as give us an extra industry slot in Pennsylvania. This is... Amazing. <laughs> I so desperately need this. I've also just been doing nothing but building civilian factories. I now have 800 total factories, though a lot is being lost to consumer goods. That will get better over time. And I'm just going to keep building civvies now because until I hit a civilian economy, it's just not worth it to go mill factories. There are so many different types of plane in Black Ice and very few of them specify what on earth they actually are. You spend so much time just trying to figure out which plane is which. What are these things? Oh yes, Japan's raised world tension with this little event. That's amazing. Oh, oh my god, look how far they've come. That's so bad. Of course, Japan's in the Axis. They have a huge production boost. Oh no. It's fine. We can go war is coming and then move down towards prepare intervention. We can 
finally get off these terrible economic laws. Oh, and dormant naval industry is now over. It's now worth it to build dockyards. Let's start activating the navy. We're going to start working in some rubber refineries and dockyards into our construction queue. Oh, baby. It's time to wake up, America. There we go. It's going up. It'll take a long time, 200 days, but slowly but surely, our economy will improve. Just got the North Carolina battleship model. This isn't just historical divisions. It's historical ships as well. Thank you very much. And the person who is behind all ship designs in this mod is clearly a massive ship fan. This is completely accurate. 28 knot speed, the number of the guns, the stats, the SHP of the engine. It's just perfect. I have no complaints. This is meticulous. There it is. Mr. Mustache Man has kicked it all off. This is going to drive world tension up decently high, hopefully, so I can actually begin to turn on my economy. We can fund the Navy. And speaking of, I gotta be really careful what techs I pick because various different designs require really specific technologies that I don't realize, so I have to make sure I plan my techs so that I get them in the right time. I'm already behind so many of these designs. It's painful. Oh wow, some of my focuses are insane. Look at the number of military factories. It's gonna give me 9 times 3, 27 mils. Oh my god, let's go! Oh, and we can do limited intervention, war neutrality, go bye-bye. I can actually start to get doctrines and really turn my economy on. This whole game is basically just me getting really excited about my economy getting better. And then I have access to all these really cool focuses that I'm still gated by quite a few things, but some of them are really, really nice. I, it's just, it's just going to take a while. Economy's a bit better, so dockyards and mill factories. Let's go. This is going to be so beautiful to see. We are about 50% world tension, though, so I can finally do Lend-Lease to the British. They bloody well deserve it. I'm going to be funding them as much as possible at the start, just giving them a bunch of guns, and then later on monthly. I'm going to be trying to do this pretty much the whole game. I need to prop up my buddies. There's no point giving anything to France because they'll just die quickly and then give it all to Germany. So we're just going to prop up Britain and eventually the Soviets with our massive industry. Oh, and also, for some reason, we get to army mobilize for free? Well, it still costs us, but all right, that takes up several hundred days to get up, but that's fine. We can also do the two Asian Navy Act, giving us way more dockyards and awesome bonuses. There's so much here. And Selective Training Act, we can actually get manpower. We can put boys in the army and actually get an army together. Oh, God damn it! I said I wouldn't do it, but I did it. I forgot to turn on my refineries whatsoever. Ugh, I'm so stupid. It's just, it's so hard to remember. All right, it is now October of 1940, which means we can finally make our very first infantry design. There were, of course, the National Guard and the regular infantry divisions. And they were, in fact, quite different, with the National Guard actually being a square formation. But we'll be looking at that a little bit later, because I actually get a National Guard template for free through the focuses. So instead, right now, I will do my earliest source for the infantry division. But before we make our first infantry division designs, we need to watch a quick training film from Command. The War Office presents War Thunder and You, sponsored by War Thunder. All right, boys. Today we're going to be learning all about the important concepts of enfilade and defilade. You don't want to get caught up by a bunch of sauerkraut eating jerrys now, do you? Ah, shucks, sir. This here is mighty boring. Oh, boring, is it? Rather be peeling potatoes down a battalion mess. Ah, well, sir, it's not you. It's just all the lecture and it's dull. Ain't there no other way we can learn to fight the jerrys? Well, there is another way, but it's really only reserved for those that click the link in the description. Oh, go on, sir. I promise we'll click the link in the description. Well, all right. It's War Thunder, the sponsor of this video! War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicular combat game ever made. A massive, completely free online multiplayer experience with thousands of tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships in a thriving community. Fight incredible battles with detailed vehicles, sound effects, and graphics against over 70 million players. With sophisticated vehicle damage modeling, distinct, wildly different game modes to suit your desires, and feels amazing to really experience different vehicles if you're a history nerd like me. Play for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the description below. New and returning players that haven't played in six months we get a massive bonus pack that includes premium vehicles, an exclusive Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account. It's only available for a limited time, so head down to the description or my pinned comment and come play War Thunder. Alright boys, just be sure not to play too much. Yeah, the whole army went AWOL to go play War Thunder. The war's over. We lost. It's your fault. Wunderbar! Mein Plan worked! <laughs> It's a little bit tricky to read, but I actually also have a complete aggregate graph of all of the divisional equipment, which is just amazing. So from that, I can see that there are, in fact, 36 pieces of regular 105mm field artillery and 12 pieces of 155mm medium howitzer. And this is the bit of a trick here that I'm going to have to deal with, that in black ice, you have light, medium, and heavy artillery. 
And currently the game assumes that the 12 155 mm is actually heavy artillery, but actually looking at the graph and looking at it properly, it's not, it's medium howitzers. This is complicated by the fact that for some reason for the USA in BICE, the medium and heavy artillery used the same caliber, the 155 millimeter shell. I'm pretty sure that the 155 was reused as the long tom for heavy guns, it just had a different barrel. But basically, this is incorrect. It should be an additional medium battalion. This means that the division is absolutely packed with artillery. We also have the issue of anti-tank. There are a total of 36 pieces of 37 millimeter anti-tank assigned to the infantry and artillery. This means I need to pack it with anti-tank. Just support anti-tank is not going to be enough. I have to assign a whole battalion to it. Alongside some motorcycle recon and a signal company, this is our infantry division. It is not very good. It has very low org, but it's what we're going to have to deal with. And before I make the tank division, I have to have the M2 medium so I can actually have some medium tanks. And here is this lovely chassis. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. It's got a 37mm gun and it's just piled up with machine guns. Interestingly, this design is actually wrong. It should have seven total machine guns. I think it's just a limit of adding all of the turrets. The game just won't let me add enough, but I can add one extra one as an anti-air machine gun, so I'll do that. All right, so the tank division of 1940. We don't even have an armor template, so I have to make one myself, but the design is pretty clear. I have a lovely little graph here. It would have had two regiments of light tanks with three battalions each, and one regiment of mediums with three battalions, as well as that it would have a, it's very strange, it has a battalion of field artillery with the armored corps, and then also a battalion of field artillery separate. Not quite sure why. All the artillery totals together to about 36 pieces of light artillery, so I have to add three battalions of motorized artillery, oh boy. And it also has about 30 pieces of light anti-tank, which we will put as just one battalion. That's a pretty good approximation. And then it's the infantry. We do have an armored infantry regiment, which contains two armored infantry battalions. This obviously makes for a very weak tank division because it's just got no org whatsoever. But to represent some of the additional trucks in the division, I will be adding one motorized infantry battalion. And as well as that, there were 500 listed motorcycles. So I will also be assigning a motorcycle infantry battalion because the reconnaissance motorcycle just doesn't give us enough. And this, I think, is a very nicely accurate armored division of 1940. Just need to change some of the support companies around a little bit to use the motorized equivalents. Because I'm sure I totally won't just completely ignore one, leaving me at a max speed of 5 kilometers an hour for the entire game. Of course not! And it looks like I did not build up enough anti-tank for this. I don't think I anticipated just how many anti-tank pieces were in the army. I do also need to remember to assign mortar teams and handheld anti-tank to my infantry divisions to represent bazookas, though that comes a little bit later. This is such a cool feature in BICE, I think this is really awesome that you can really control the specificities of what kind of support equipment your divisions get. Man, some of the decisions here are so strong. I can get base war support and weekly war support, which is very nice, but I can also do emergency arms deliveries and give an absolutely insane amount of equipment to the UK for free. That is fantastic, look at that. And some aren't so good. Uh, pilots requested for the plan. It's not telling me what the plan is, but I guess good idea. Thanks to this lovely focus, we've just received a whole bunch of National Guard divisions, including a new National Guard template. So let's just compare it to my sources. This division is absolutely chonked up with men and artillery. It has four different regiments in two brigades, so there are a total of 16 battalions. But alongside that, there is just so much artillery in the divisional artillery. There's two regiments, each with two battalions of 12 105s. So to be able to make this accurate, I'd have to have 48 pieces of artillery, as well as like 24 pieces of medium artillery. Like the best I can do is this, because I need to have them as four regiments. This is the closest I can get it. Along with a signal battalion, this is just an obscenely large division. Gradually, these were reduced, and by 1942, they were converted to the regular army infantry template, which we will do over time. But this, we're going to have to use this. It's just chunked up. We'll move those over to the Philippines to be the sort of Philippine Guard, because the National Guard were actually the first forces to fight against Japanese forces in the Philippines. Oh, and also I can now move to early mobilization. Let's go. Our economy is going to take off. It's going to take ages, but this is so important. We are also now, April 1941, getting a little close to Japan's attack, so alongside building the wonderfully historical Iowa-class battleship, we are going to be assigning all of our navies into different groups between the Pacific and Atlantic. And that's basically what I've done here. I have divided up the fleets between west and east with one big massive battle fleet in each one. 
The one in the Pacific has the majority of the carriers, and I've also got a good amount of submarines for convoy raiding, and also escort destroyers for both zones. I think I got a little bit more escorts for the Atlantic to protect against subs, but most of the ships are in the Pacific because Japan is a chunky boy. The Atlantic forces are decently strong, and I've also been training them up as well. I just don't need these guys as a priority over here, but I do want to be able to fight against any German ships that I come across. There's just so many ships, and I'm still building so many now with my dozens or hundreds of dockyards. It's, it's, it's intense. Oh baby, there it is. The Soviet war has begun. Gonna immediately start lend leasing over to the Soviets. I gotta try and prop them up. And at the very least, I am now getting close to finishing the World War I doctrines. And though I was complaining, I really love this specificity. MG support infantry or infantry support MG is actually a choice that I get to make. Famously, the Germans have the infantry supporting the machine guns, whereas in the US and British military, the machine guns all support the riflemen. Everything's about the riflemen. So I'll be doing the historical option of MG support infantry, but I just think that's so cool that you can pick from this. All right, it's October 1941, and you know what? Japan's looking kind of scary. Roosevelt's got a great idea. What do you say we send a bunch of ships over to Hawaii and a Pearl Harbor gambit? That way, we can deter any Japanese aggression. We won't be able to move away from this focus for 60 days, and apparently Japan will have the opportunity to do something, but I'm sure that's not important. Oh, uh, okay. Only two days after I started the focus, Japan has attacked Pearl Harbor. That's not quite right, but whatever. Oh wow, look at all the things they do. So they actually lose some planes and stuff and they declare war. But actually, it's not that bad. 25, 50, 25% chance of losing two, three, or four capital ships and maybe some cruisers. And I lose a bunch of planes. And for 120 days, I do have some massive fleet analysis. That's not a big deal. I didn't lose any carriers. I didn't really lose anything of importance. Come on, Japan, get it together. This, of course, means that I can finally do Beast of America and go down towards economic mobilization and get absolutely insanely strong. They're already invading us a little bit in some of the islands, but honestly, not that bad. My fleets are otherwise pretty much ready. I'll move them a bit more west. We also do have an interesting mechanic I haven't talked about yet, the island hopping system. Basically, the more Pacific islands I take, the stronger my bonuses get and the, the worse Japan's malices get. And the same vice versa. So they will probably have a little bit of a bonus soon as they start to invade me, but then I can just take it back and wreck their economy. Just got our newest tank designs, the M3 Stewart, the rather famously kind of crap light tank but it's fine. And the glorious M3 Lee, an also rather crap medium tank. This thing was replaced by the Sherman pretty much as soon as they could, but the Lee just needed to get rolled out ASAP so as to be able to actually equip tank divisions, much like how I'm building it now. Though of course it's actually called the M3 Lee Singularity after a most recent rejoining YouTube member. Oh yeah, we're in the good part of the focus tree now. War production board, this gives me 64 factories for free, two per week, come on. And after several minutes of hunting down really specific battery technologies in the naval production folder, I have the Essex. Oh baby, look at this beautiful carrier. This is the carrier that we'll be building a lot of and will be our mainstay reinforcement fleets to do, try and destroy the Japanese. Oh, just look at how many military factories we're building now. Oh, it's finally happening. The giant wakes. We also gotta get stuck in the war. We're gonna start sending planes over to Britain, including a whole bunch of bombardiers, the B-24s. I just wanna start bombing Germany and France and obliterating German military industrial capabilities. It's gonna take a long time to get it all geared up and trained, but honestly, it's gonna be amazing. Also, we should really get an attaché to the Soviets so I can actually see how they're doing, because it doesn't look like they're doing really well. It's December already, and this line is not good. It pushed very heavily. They've already lost all the little Baltics. It's not good. Stalingrad's under threat. I just hope they can survive with my lend lease. Oh, uh, okay. Some of the reinforcements I sent to the Philippines have decided to reroute through the Mediterranean. So I have a bunch of divisions just in the Mediterranean getting sunk by Italian convoy raiders. So I guess I'm going to repurpose these guys and now they're going to go join the African Front. What the hell is this? It's fine though, because it is now January 1942. I've got forces all over the place. We're fighting the Japanese in all of the Dutch East Indies. We're trying to help them out in Burma, in Africa as well. And my planes are now beginning to bomb into Europe. My beautiful B-24 Liberators are going to liberate those ball-bearing factories, if you know what I mean. When it comes to divisional changes in 42, there's not a lot that happens to our infantry because the template design is sort of the 4041 one and it kind of rolled over into 1942. The only change I'll make, though, is to convert one of the battalions into an assault infantry. This makes them use the SMGs, the Thompson submachine guns, to represent, I, I guess, much more aggressive power. And this is just because I want to have the division to have a good number of Thompsons, and this is about how many would have been issued at this stage in the war. 
They add firepower and are primarily given to NCOs, squad leaders, and officers and the like. The tanks, however, underwent a pretty massive change. They were totally restructured so as to accommodate more medium tanks in only two regiments. Alongside that, it gained an additional mechanized infantry battalion, and it lost its dedicated anti-tank battalion, instead just losing some of the numbers, and we'll represent that by simply having a support anti-tank. But the main thing that happened is a lot of artillery was added. Three different groups of eight. 18 artillery, half-track towed. This means that the tank division of 1942 had 54 pieces of artillery in it, and to properly represent that, I have to have five goddamn artillery battalions in this division, absolutely tanking my organization and making this thing basically useless. It's agony, but that's just what I've got to do. They loved their artillery. But the only good thing though is that over time I can begin to replace these motorized artillery with dedicated self-propelled guns, the M7 Priests. So at least they'll have a little bit of armor, but this is what we have to deal with, it's it's hell. Finally for 42, we gotta make the Marines. That's right, we actually get some Marine divisions. Every other game I do in this series, I have to kind of amalgamate a Marine division, but the US, they actually had them. I have a lovely source for it here, and as expected, it has 9 Marine infantry battalions, with some beautiful pack artillery. 36 pieces of that, so very similar to the infantry, and it also has uh, 12 pieces of 155mm. Now, there's no way to make that pack artillery, so I just have to add a motorized medium artillery, and it tanked my amphibious stats, but that's just the way it is. The other weird thing about the Marine Division is it has a tank battalion. That's right, the special forces within it had a dedicated section of tanks, and not only a few tanks, 60 of them. So I have to actually add a full tank battalion to the division to be able to reach it. That is a chunky boy. Hey, and to celebrate, we get our very first naval victory against the Japanese. Very nice. We're just going to keep trying to sink as many Japanese destroyers and ships as we can as we maneuver around the islands, because we do actually need to be planning some amphibious invasions of the islands. It's going to take ages. Plus some great pushes to try to liberate the Dutch East Indies. It's going to take a very long time because we don't have any good doctrines, but oh boy. I will say, this is such a weird game for me in comparison to the other Black Eyes games I've played, because I'm so used to actually getting stuck in and being really involved in the combat, but right now I'm just being a Lenly's daddy. I am fighting the Japanese in the Pacific and, you know, in the Dutch East Indies, but other than that, I'm not really fighting. I'm just sending things to other countries, massively supporting them and throwing my navy wherever possible. It's very weird. Thought it'd be nice and historical and start out with Guadalcanal. We did get caught by some Japanese subs, but we are landing and we have taken Guadalcanal. On to the rest of the Pacific. And I can keep being a lend daddy to the Soviets just by with this recurring foreign policy thing. Massively reduce their production cost. It's beautiful. I just need to be keeping an eye on them because they are not doing great. And I'm only just realizing just how many tiny Pacific islands I have to take to be able to win the weird little balance of power thing is hell. At least I'm sinking some of their ships, including a battleship. It's just a slow going process. I'm also just not used to my industrial power base here. Every minute or so I have to reassign a bunch of military factories to all these things because I basically have none and I'm building so many per week. It's honestly overwhelming. I was also getting really scared about China, but they have actually stalled Japan. Even though the East Indies are falling in general, they're holding. I wonder if it's due to my support. Also, it's time to start the very last World War One Doctrine, baby. Soon I can move over to World War II and actually be useful. I'm not really sure how, but one of my armor divisions I was sending to the Philippines ended up in Syria. I didn't do this, but hey, I'll use them to help destroy the weird little bit of Vichy France in Syria that they lost. Okay, whatever. It's, I don't know why they're here, but now they're stuck in Africa, so this tank is now in Africa. I'm continuing all the naval invasions and trying to watch out for my marines. I've somehow lost quite a few of them, and some of them are actually completely abandoned on islands. Ooh, and we're actually losing ships against the Japanese. This is not so great. We're getting port strike to hell because I put my fleet over here in Saipan just to get me some range. I'm not sure that was the right call. Oh, God. I've also only now just realized how little research I put into landing craft and naval invasion tech, meaning I am limited to like two or three divisions to be part of naval landings because BICE reduces the limit. I'm so stupid. But it's okay. We have World War II doctrines. We're going to be grabbing everything we can. We're going to be going superior firepower. We're going to get an elastic defense. Oh, it's going to be amazing to finally get some organization and buffs. I love the doctrine system in Vice. It's just very convoluted. It's almost the end of 42 and I'm still not yet on war economy because it takes so long to move over, please. And the Japanese are port striking the crap out of me. Luckily, I'm massively outbuilding their fleet, but damn, it's unpleasant. Also, since it's 1943, we do need to think about the new infantry design. 
not a huge amount changed within this. It's just a sort of reorganization of the artillery and some extra guns. But it's actually a little confusing to really understand because alongside the divisional artillery, there's also artillery dedicated to the regimental level and the battalion level. So you have to count all of them. I'll spare you the suffering, but basically adding up all of the different artillery within all the different sections, you end up with 54 pieces of light artillery alongside the 12155. So I'm going to have to add even more artillery battalions. But what's worse is the anti-tank. There are actually 57 anti-tank guns here. Isn't that insane? I'm going to have to add a whole nother damn battalion of anti-tank and artillery just to be able to even come close to the proper historical infantry design. It's just too big, man. Next up is the tank divisional change. Basically, the tanks were made way smaller. They were like, wow, this is taking too many tanks. Uh, it only had around 70 light tanks and 170 medium tanks. The artillery is a little bit trickier though, because we've got this whole mess of different equipment types, some of them being added later on because this design was the one that listed all the way until 1945. But basically what I'm going to be doing is replacing this motorized artillery with M7 Priest self-propelled guns over time. The other thing as well, looking again at the equipment, the anti-tank is actually 57 millimeter anti-tank. So that's actually medium anti-tank. And I've not been building that at all, so I need to start building that and I'll put that in the division now. And there we go, so that's what it's going to look like. It's still pretty chunky, but I'll be replacing the artillery over time. And oh boy, look what I've just realized. That signal company is not motorized. So it has limited my division to 5 kilometers per hour this whole time. I've had two years of being trapped at 5 kilometers. Now I'm at 9. I'm so stupid. One thing I do really hate about Bice is your divisions have an innate fear of overwhelming the supply of an area. If you have too little supply, your divisions will literally just hang back and not get involved unless you set them to aggressive battle planning. So I have to do it. And it's so frustrating. They just refuse to take part in the attack and they'll hide out at the back. I could have taken so much more of the Dodgers Indies by now. At least I can share all of my tank designs with my allied buddies to the UK and the Soviet Union. I'm contributing. Oh, and look at this. We've been taking so many Pacific Islands. We are now winning. The Pacific shall be ours. We have Iwo Jima. Yes. Oh, God. We have so much spare equipment we're just sitting on. I need to be sending this to the Soviets. What am I doing? I make so much. It's all right. I'll apologize by bombing the crap out of Germany with tons of B-27 Liberators. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Lendlease is working. That weird Chinese puppet of Japan, the reformed government of China, has been capitulated. Japan is getting wrecked and knocked out of China. It's working. Oh yeah, look at this. All the Japanese convoys that I'm raiding and destroying. I hope my subs are doing such good work. Oh, this is fantastic. I thought I wasn't being very useful, but actually I am. Oh, okay, that's weird. Operation Torch has just automatically fired. Uh, I didn't do anything. I, that wasn't me. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do anything. I have no forces prepared or anyone there. Um, it's bypassed some stuff. Apparently my troops have landed on the beaches. Uh, nope, not, not real. It's alright, screw historicity. Japan has invaded in Ethiopia. What is this? Why are they here? I don't like this, but I'm still destroying their navy in the Pacific, so it's fine. Oh, look at this, a battle of Midway. It's, it's not at Midway, but it's so many ships. This is beautiful. Oh, there's so many carriers involved. Okay, we did actually, unfortunately, kind of lose. We didn't really lose any capitals, though. They lost a whole bunch of planes, and I lost some destroyers. You know what? I'm, I'll am i take it. That's a kind of a W. I'm also just desperately trying to get the M4 Sherman together, because, come on, unga bunga. But I still need gun stabilization to be able to achieve it and I cannot find it anywhere, and I finally found it, and it's a 1946 tech. I get four years ahead of time bonus, but how was I supposed to know? There's no way to search in the research tab. This is so hidden. Still recreating Masters of the Air with bombing Germany, and also with casualties, I've actually managed to lose 125 bombers, but it's worth it to destroy the German industry. Seriously, I'm just sending planes everywhere. Look at all the planes over Africa. This is amazing. Oh, we're helping. It's lagging my computer, though. Okay, this is kind of cool. Once I do Overlord, the Soviets will be able to launch Operation Bagration. Well, it's September 43, so they won't have long to wait, right? I just have to get down this focus tree, which is like a shared focus tree with the Commonwealth, to be able to eventually do D-Day. Regardless, we have the beautiful M4 Sherman with its 75mm gun. Ah, oh, ain't she beauty. The, the model isn't quite right, but <laughs> we'll name it the M4 Sherman Yumsuk, because come on, it's a much better name. Now 1944, I can finally actually make the M7 Priest. So much of its tech was locked behind dates, I couldn't build it, but look at it, it's beautiful. Oh, it's amazing. And we're also going to start getting ready for D-Day, I hope. We're continuing to push back in the East Indies, we're taking back the Java Islands and Borneo, and the islands are pretty much all but reclaimed. 
They're destroyed. We've got them on the run. And our boys are moving over to Great Britain to train and get ready for the liberation of Europe. Plus building some extra special funky nuclear reactors. Gotta build them in New Mexico. It only makes sense. I'll be using those a little later. Okay, small problem with D-Day. It's now May, and uh, I'm still not ready to do it. I still have to do these focuses. Some of them I'm not allowed to do. The UK has to do them, like the train the forces. But when they do that, they get a 180-day cooldown, as do I when I do the glider infantry focus. I can't do Overlord until both of those are completed. So not only do I need to wait for the focuses to get picked by another country, I have to then wait 180 days to be able to even start Overlord. And then it's 50 days more. So I'm not D-Daying until 45. Well, even though we can't do D-Day, we can at least make our 1944 infantry divisions. And I can actually base it off of the official U.S. Army handbook of the time. The main thing that happened is a pretty significant reduction of artillery. To match the LeGraf, we only need to remove one battalion, so it's just like a little bit better. And the other main thing I'm going to have to think about is the addition of a separate tank battalion. These were tanks that were added to infantry divisions to help bolster up their armor and provide direct fire support. But these didn't happen until after D-Day properly for like the entire army. So I won't be adding them until D-Day is complete and we're in France. For tank divisions, there wasn't really much in terms of changes except for a gradual increase of M7 priests in place of motorized artillery. Also, some M8 Scots were added, which are actually technically a close support gun tank light cs tank in this mod so i might add some of those later on but mostly the division stays pretty much typical to how i did it earlier it just stays like this it's not a bad design it just could do some more organization i am now completely out of convoys that is crazy just goes to show you how many different fronts i'm in and how many convoys i'm sending to other people I need to build some dockyards and just send them entirely on convoys. Or, oh, speaking of being involved, we just destroyed the German Navy, such as it is. I even sunk their pride of the fleet, Bismarck. Oh, that's beautiful. Surely nothing could get in the way of our D-Day now. And I really need to do it soon because the Soviets are really struggling. Without bagration bonuses, they are just not able to push. They're just kind of stuck. Honestly, kind of seems like the AI is just turned off, which is very frustrating. We have pretty much liberated the East Indies entirely, and Japan has been completely pushed out of China. It's a glorious thing. I also realize I have yet to make a parachute infantry division. I should probably do that now in anticipation of D-Day. I'm just going to clone this little template, and it's kind of a weird design. While it does have three regiments, two of them are actually glider infantry regiments, which contain only two infantry battalions. And it also had 36 pieces of airborne dropped light pack artillery which this mod does actually replicate, which is just amazing. And also, even though I could drop anti-tank, it doesn't appear that the division actually had dedicated anti-tank guns. I guess they just relied on the handheld anti-tank bazookas instead. As well as that, we get a nice little mix of different support companies that can actually be dropped, including a field hospital detachment, some signals, anything that can be dropped, basically, including just regular recon. That was technically cavalry recon, which is weird. But there we go. This is it. This is the... Airborne Division of 1944. This is the 101st. It's easy company, baby. Uh, okay, what? Why did Ireland just join the Japanese faction and is now at war with us? What the hell? I'm gonna have to completely move my forces to go and try and counter this Irish incursion. Why did this happen? I better do it quick because I can finally do Operation Overlord as a go. 50 days. And now I'll just show you the plan that I've already set up. I've got 19 divisions, two tanks and 17 infantry to land around Khan. As well as that, I've got nine infantry divisions to land behind Khan and also around it as well to make a beautiful little invasion force. This is as historical a D-Day as I could muster. I've got Air Force everywhere. I've got Parachute Boys, which, oh God, we were really pushed into Belfast already. Okay, these boys are going to have to move really quick because these are the follow-up forces. Go, go, go. Okay, sorry, can I help you? What is the Japanese Navy doing here? I just sunk a carrier. What? <laughs> All right, it is the 6th of March, 1945. It's D-Day. I'm calling it. I'm hitting the button. The plan's all ready. A bunch of modifiers get put in states, and we get some free units. Mm, okay, it's it's just given us two paratrooper units in Nantes in Brittany and some partisan units of the Marquis in the southeast. That That's it. That's all he gave me. Okay, I don't even know what the bonuses are. Ah, oh, whatever. It's fine. We're doing it ourselves. We're launching our own invasion. Let's freaking go. Ooh, okay. There's no D-Day wall. What? The AI was not garrisoning the entirety of the D-Day wall. Just the ports in Cherbourg. What on earth? I'm, I'm surprised. There's no forces here. Just go. It's just the parachute boys. They took it instantly. <laughs> oh my god. Let's just move all of our armies over as soon as possible. Well, this is a lot more of a success than I was expecting. I've taken a port. There's one German Panzer Division here. Oh, it's it's pretty strong, actually. Its stats kick my ass. That's not so great. 
But it's okay, we've got numbers and we've got a lot of air force. We're just gonna try and put as much here as possible. Just keep pushing, boys. Also, we're now in 45 and it's after D-Day, so it's time to add that separate tank battalion to my infantry divisions. I have to really, like, change things up. This is what it looks like. I really don't like it, having to put them in two regiments. But this is the only way I can make it work. But now I can slap a beautiful little medium tank, some M4 Shermans, into that 5th regiment. This, this division's gonna be pretty low supply and low org, but it's gonna do things. I do also just want to mention here about motorized infantry divisions. I got a lot of flack in my original USA video that I didn't motorize all of my infantry divisions for D-Day because there was some feeling that they should be. However, I actually have sources that specify that indeed infantry divisions were not motorized. However, they did have the opportunity to become motorized should the need present itself. There was basically just enough trucks to motorize every one of them, but that's not really what they did in practice because it would be too grueling and fuel and other resources. A great example of this is during the defense of the Battle of the Bulge. Eisenhower basically managed to make it so that all of the infantry divisions in the entire area were trucked in using trucks brought in from all over the country to bring over hundreds of thousands of soldiers to help resist the German advance. So we will be keeping our infantry divisions entirely foot-based, except for the artillery, and not making them motorized. If you disagree with that, let me know in the comments, but I think this is the historical thing. I think the Germans are beginning to pull back from the Soviet front, so hopefully the Soviets can actually do something and actually contribute, so I don't have to do it all myself. And Japan has landed in Madagascar for some reason. Good job, Britain, for guarding the seas. Thanks a lot. Well, at least I sunk the majority of their navy now. No more carriers and battleships for you, Japan. Oh god, I figured out why I've lost so many supplies while I've been pushing in France. They have complete air control over the English Channel and they're bombing the crap out of my convoys. Alright, we'll just dedicate a bunch of fighters to try and put that down and fix it, but... Damn, man, we need to be pushing harder in France. We've been here for months. Regardless, the fronts are completely static. We can't really seem to push very hard into France, but you know what we can do? You know what we can do? Oh, that's right. Bye-bye, <gasps> Berlin. Oh, that's satisfying. Get wrecked. Plus, why not? Let's also send a certain little boy to go visit Japan. And you know what? A fat man too. Oh, what? That instantly gave us a peace deal. Oh my god, so if you drop two nukes on Japan, they instantly surrender. That is incredible. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. We did it. We won the war in the Pacific. China has taken pretty much everything, but we have got a supervised state over most of Japan, so I'm pretty happy with that. Back on the Western Front, we are just stuck. I really cannot breach these German divisions. Even though we have massive air support, our divisions just don't have enough organization to be able to stay in a battle long enough. The Soviets are finally pushing, though, which is great. So we just have to, I don't know, keep trying and keep hitting them. The Brits are trying a little naval invasion with garrison forces into Amsterdam and immediately d d dying. I guess that was Market Garden. Well, that went about as well as real-life Market Garden, so all right. I guess we'll celebrate by nuking Brussels. Sorry, but there's too many divisions there and I need to get past it. Sorry, better still, Belgium just was not complying. Also, I only bombed East Germany. I think I should make it even and also bomb West Germany, just to be fair. Ah, oh, beautiful. Unfortunately, it would appear that Paradox is very angry with me after that because this happens. The game crashes and it now keeps crashing. I am completely unable to complete the save. It would appear a patch has broken my save game. Oh boy! But it's a foregone conclusion. The Soviets were pushing from the east. I'm pushing in from the west. I got nukes galore. I would win. I'm very sorry you don't get to see an actual peace deal, but you know what the Potsdam Conference would do. So that is it. I have pretty much managed to win World War II using only entirely historical divisions and designs as the USA. True, the game punished me for nuking things, but hey, it was beautiful. Thank you very much for watching. Do be sure to leave a like and a comment down below suggesting a new video idea. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Make sure to use my link in the description and to sign up and get an exclusive Eagle of Valor decorator, 100,000 silver lines, and 7 days of premium. And I will see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>